All right, so I'm Dan Ramras, and I'm going to be talking about homological stability for spaces of representations. Uh, this is joint work with Mentor Staffa at Tulane. Um, put the archive reference for the paper there. And I want to thank the organizers for putting together the, putting together this uh, virtual AMS session. It's nice to have the chance to speak, even though we can't be there all together. Okay, so uh, I just want to start by kind of setting the stage here. The objects that we're interested in are uh, spaces of commuting elements in Lie groups. So we'll start with the compact Lie group G, and we're going to look at uh, the space HOM from a free abelian group into G. Uh, so that just consists of all n tuples of elements in the group uh, which pairwise commute. Okay, and so so these spaces were uh, studied by Witten uh, because of their connections with gauge theory. Basically, if you look at flat connections on a torus, uh, the holonomy of such a connection will give you a and tuple of commuting elements like this. All right. So I want to point out that uh, the restriction that G is a compact Lie group is uh, not really important here. If you take instead, say, the complexification of some compact group, like uh, G or general linear group, uh, which is the complexification of the unitary group, then the space of commuting n tuples in G and the space of commuting n tuples in K are actually homotopy equivalent. That's a result of Pettit and Pseudo. Uh, Bergeron also gave a new proof of that more recently. Okay, so the the goal for today is really to understand the rational homology of these spaces and of uh, some related spaces, related spaces like the conjugation quotient. So here uh, I've taken the quotient by the action of G where um, the Lie group G is just conjugating uh, an n-tuple. Okay. So it turns out that the Poincaré series of these spaces can be described via Lie theoretic data about the group G. So one example of that um, Staffa, uh, Staffa gave the following formula. Uh, so the Poincaré series, so that, that's the polynomial whose coefficient, uh, uh, or the coefficient of t to the k um, is the rank of the kth homology. Uh, so it's, it's described in terms of the vial group. Uh, so w here is the, the vial group. Um, and so, so it's a sum, or an average, over the elements of the vial group of uh, these polynomials that come from the action of the vial group on, an, on the Lie algebra of the maximal torus. So, so the vial group is the normalizer of the maximal torus in G, and it acts on the Lie algebra of T. Uh, so, that, so when we're writing W in this formula, that's referring to uh, W thought of as a linear transformation on this Lie algebra, and then uh, you can form the matrix one one plus T W, uh, and its determinant uh, will be a polynomial in T, and so those are what those are the pieces that go into this formula. And uh, so Staffa and I worked out a, a similar formula for the Poincaré polynomial of um, Hom ZNG. And I should say, uh, both in this formula and also here, we're really looking at the identity component, so the component of this space uh, containing the trivial representation, the, the commuting tuple, that's all uh, the identity of G in every coordinate. Okay. So after we found these formulas, we started doing some computations with them, and uh, the calculations showed 
that the ranks of the homology groups appear to stabilize. And, and the, again, those ranks are just the coefficients of t to the k in this point gray polynomial. So you can plug these into a computer. Uh, the, there's enough, I mean, it's, it's not a hard problem to work out the, the matrices involved. Um, and uh, they get big quickly, so we can't do that much computation, but it, it appeared to us that, that these were stabilizing. And the data that we had suggested stability. Uh, for example, as you let the Lie group G vary through a classical sequence like the unitary groups or the uh, symplectic groups. So what I want to talk about today uh, is basically an application of representation stability to prove uh, these kinds of statements. So the main results, um, so if you look at the conjugation quotients, so, so here I've, I've taken GR is going to be something like maybe UR or maybe SP2R. Um, and let's see, I don't think I need a 2R there, just, just SPR is all I really need. Um, if I was going to do SO, then a factor of 2 would come in. Um, so, so as we increase the rank from R to R plus 1, we get uh, stabilization maps. And in homology, these maps are isomorphisms uh, once um, R is at least K. And so then if, uh, if we don't take the conjugation quotient, if we just look at the space of commuting n-tuples um, before conjugation, then we again get homological stability, although the range is not quite as good. Uh, you need to go a little bit further. You need to go out until the rank minus the square root of the rank is at least the uh, degree of the homology group you're looking at. Now, neither of these results is likely to be an optimal stable range. Uh, the computer calculations we've done suggest that probably these are off by about a factor of two. All right. So I want to explain some about the methods that go into this. And, and basically, the, the methods are representation stability. Uh, and, and specifically, we're using work of Church Ellenberg Farb, and then uh, Jenny Wilson generalized their work from just looking at representations of the symmetric group to looking at representations of uh, vial groups, uh, such as like the vial groups of uh, the symplectic groups, again, should have just SPR, or the orthogonal groups. Um, so, so that's that's one of the main tools that we're using. And the other, the other side of it, uh, on sort of the topological side, we use rational models for these spaces that were constructed by Tom Baer, studied by Tom Baer in his thesis. Uh, okay, so sort of the key observation behind what we're doing to prove these homological stability results is that if you have a sequence of spaces and you want to show that their homology groups stabilize, one way to do it is to realize those spaces as quotients of some bigger space by the symmetric group. So, so sigma r is going to denote the symmetric group. Um, and then if you can prove that these sequences uh, of symmetric group representations satisfy representation stability, then it turns out that the invariance, the sigma r invariance, which recover the homology of these quotient spaces, um, those also stabilize. And basically it's because the invariance are the isotypical, isotypical components of the trivial representation. And so part of representation stability is basically saying that the size of those isotypical components uh, stabilize as, as you let uh, k go to infinity. Um, k, uh, sorry, r go to infinity. So it should be r here. So as, as r varies, k is a fixed 
degree of homology and as, as R varies, we're uh, getting bigger and bigger symmetric group actions. And that's where we're seeing the representation stability. All right. Um, so, so not only do we get representation stability, but uh, you get, well, maybe I shouldn't say the same stable range, but the, the range in which the isotypical component of the trivial representation stabilizes, well, is at least as good as the uh, range in which all representations are stabilizing. So, so at least you have a bound on the stable range. Okay. So let me explain what uh, Baird did. So basically he showed that you can understand the homology of this space by taking conjugates of elements from a fixed maximal torus. So one way to get a, commuti a commuting n-tuple is just to take a bunch of elements from a maximal torus. And then if you have any element of the group, you can just conjugate by that element and get a new commuting n-tuple. And uh, well, that factors through the diagonal action of a vial group, as it turns out. And so what Baird showed is that that's actually an equivalence in rational homology. And he gave a, a similar model for the equivariant for the homotopy orbit space, um, where G is acting by, by conjugation again. Uh, there what you find is uh, BT, classifying space of the maximal torus, cross T to the N, uh, again, modding out the diagonal action of the vial group. So this, this uh, first, this first statement up here basically reduces the question of homological stability for, uh, for these spaces to just studying separately um, these pieces. Uh, and really, um, so, so of course we're looking at some sequence as the rank of the Lie groups increase. Uh, really you can reduce down from T to the N to just single understanding a single copy of the torus as the ranks increase. Okay, so Wilson showed that uh, as you look through the one of these sequences, any of these sequences of classical Lie groups, uh, the homology of GR mod TR is actually a finitely generated uh, FIW module. So if you're not familiar with this theory of FIW modules, just think in the unitary case, if we're thinking of GR as the unitary group of rank R, um, then this is just talking, we're just talking about FI modules. Uh, in general, there might be a larger vial group and uh, we're building in a little more than just a symmetric group action. Okay, so, so that's sort of half of the picture. Um, and so the other half, the other side is, whoops, the other side is the torus, uh, so S1 to the R. Um, so, so again, like let's think of the unitary groups where the maximal torus in UR is just a copy of S1 to the R. And so there, it's a nice exercise uh, sort of maybe the simplest example of a finitely generated FI module arising topologically. So if you take a, if you take a space X um, whose homology is finite dimensional in each degree, uh, and then you look at just Cartesian powers of that space with the permutation action, uh, natural permutation action on them, then the homology, fix a, fix a degree of, on homology, and then look at the sequence of symmetric group representations that you get. And that's actually a finitely generated Fi module. And the generators are just uh, in these sort of diagonal degrees, the kth homology of the kth power. And uh, yeah, this is a very nice thing to just sort of work out. It's not very hard. Basically, you just apply the Kuna theorem, and uh, yeah, yeah. So if you're not an expert in FI modules, I, I strongly recommend trying this exercise. Sort of get a feeling for how they how they work. Uh, 
Okay, so not only is this sequence of symmetric group representations an Fi module, um, it's a, it actually the extra structure of an Fi sharp module, and that that gives you better control over the stable range. Uh, it tells you that the invariants um, stabilize uh, when uh, at r equals k. So so once you go, if you're looking at a fixed at degree k homology, you just need to go out to the rth power before you start to see stability. Uh, and again, these these invariants are, are really you're really looking at the homology of the quotient space. Okay. So I, I should say again, everything I'm doing here is rational homology, and uh, I'm not writing that everywhere. But this this statement here is certainly using uh, that we're talking about rational homology. Okay. So the general theory of Fi modules then tells you that uh, you can sort of combine these pieces to find that um, the homology of these Hom spaces stabilizes, uh, but you don't get a stable range this way. And, and the reason basically is that in proving this result here, uh, Wilson uses the Noetherian property of Fi modules, and that's saying, well, well, you have some finitely generated Fi module and a submodule, the submodule is also finitely generated, but you lose control over where the generators live. Okay, so if you want to get bounds on the stable range, well, you need to do something else, and so I want to say a little bit about what that is that we do. Um, so, so we use this other model, again, due to bear that I mentioned before, uh, for the homotopy orbit space um, of these spaces of commuting n tuples. Um, so, so the model is this product of the classifying space of the torus with power of the torus, uh, modulo the vial group, and it, so this is telling you that the equivariant, oops, the equivariant homology of these spaces um, looks like the vial group invariance of this product. And so again, you can sort of break down the general theory of Fi modules allows you to break down the problem as you look through one of these sequences, GR, like GR again could be U of R. Uh, you basically get to break down the problem into studying these, you get to break down these sequences uh, into just the sequence for the classifying spaces of the tori and just for the powers of the tori. Um, and so both of these basically come down to, well, that exercise because uh, the torus is a product of circles and so you can really think of everything here as just being uh, powers of a fixed space. And so these are both Fi sharp modules and they're generated uh, in the stage r equals k. And so the conclusion here is that uh, this space of commuting tuples satisfies, well, gr equivariant homological stability in this nice clean range uh, where the rank is at least the degree of the homology group. Okay, so the, the main theorem now is that if you go back to ordinary cohomology, then as you increase the rank of the group by one, you get an isomorphism, well, not quite in the same range, but at least uh, if you increase the range enough so that r minus the square root of r is at least k. And so the way that this proceeds is through an analysis of the Eilenberg more spectral sequences. Um, so you have a vibration from the homotopy orbit space down to uh, BG with the representation space or this space of commuting tuples as the fiber. And as you map, as you increase the rank of the group, you get a map of spectral sequences. And so 
the Allenberg Morse spectral sequence allows that it, it converges to the homology of the fiber, uh, or the cohomology, but everything's rational here, so it doesn't matter much. Um, and the input is uh, the cohomology of the total space here, this equivariant cohomology, has a module over uh, the cohomology of BGR. And so basically, you what happens here is that you combine the standard stability results for the uh, classifying spaces of the Lie groups with this uh, stability that we just talked about for the equivariant cohomology. And well, so you have to work through how the spectral sequence behaves. It's kind of a delicate analysis to get this uh, this bound here. And well, something something is happening to create that that square root. Uh, there's sort of a, a quadratic vanishing curve in the in the spectral sequence. Um, okay. So I just want to end by saying a little bit about some further results and a uh, couple of questions. So. There's another direction in which you can look at these spaces. You can change n, the number of commuting elements, instead of changing the Lie group. And when you do that, you have a symmetric group action just by permuting the uh, elements in your n-tuple. And it turns out that those sequences are also representation-stable. The homology is representation-stable. Um, and you can give a definite bound there. Um, and you can also take invariance, uh, sorry, you, you can take the quotient by the symmetric group action, uh, which in homology corresponds to taking invariance, uh, and, and there you get stability uh, for n greater than or equal to k. And, and the methods are kind of similar, again, using Baird's models. Um, I also wanted to mention another natural question to ask is what happens if you look at configurations of commuting elements, so, so insist that different terms in your commuting tuple are, are actually distinct. Um, so uh, Angel Cruz um, wrote a master's thesis uh, last year um, in Mexico where he looked at uh, this question and was able to prove uh, similar stability results. And, and basically the method is to compare these these uh, configuration spaces um, to the full uh, space of commuting elements using the Totaro spectral sequence. Um, if I had to guess, my guess would be that the bounds you get here are not uh, optimal and maybe maybe more modern methods uh, could be used to, to get sharper results here, but I'm not certain. So, so a few questions. Um, well, can the stable ranges be improved? Uh, so, so one question in particular, um, I mentioned that I don't know of a stable range bound for GR mod TR itself. And maybe if one understood that uh, FI module better, maybe some better results would be possible in these other cases. Uh, so another, another interesting question is what happens if you uh, look at representations of some other group. I mean, even just a free group. Uh, if you look at, so, so I mean, here you're just looking at g to the n, actually. Mod conjugation by g, that actually becomes something interesting. That's the, the free group character variety of g. Um, and it, the, the, the cohomology of those spaces is known when g equals su2. Uh, and from, that's, that's work of Baird, and from his formulas, you can actually see that, uh, that, that it, when you look at the symmetric group action here, commuting the, uh, the coordinates of an n-tuple, uh, you get a representation-stable sequence. Um, so it's the natural to conjecture that that might extend to uh, other Lie groups, not just SU2. Um, and that's something that, uh, talked some with Sean Lawton about, and, well, it's, we have some ideas, but it's nothing, nothing very concrete yet. Um, okay, well, I will end there. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, here are some 
references that I mentioned during the talk. All right.